Our next chapter is called The Plan. Number one, find shadow today. Number two, use the collar and leash to capture him. Number three, put him in Mona Lisa's garage with his food and water. Number four, walk him twice a day so he can poop. That way, if we didn't, if we did have to evacuate, I'd know exactly where Shadow was. I had it all figured out. Of course, as with almost every tricky scheme, there was a flaw. Mona Lisa said, yes, I found Shadow. And with food and water, we hid him in her garage where he barked all night long. The next morning, when the doorbell rang at 6 a.m., no one had to tell me who it was, Ms. Lafayette. All I heard her say was, take this animal. Then I heard Pops apologize. Then I heard the door close. And then I heard, Saint! I'd forgotten one thing, a muzzle. Sorry, but I knew you wouldn't let him stay here. You're right, darn dog barks all night. His name's Shadow, I reminded him. Folks gotta get some sleep. If we let him stay inside, he might not bark. <laughs> we both knew it was a lie. And so, as I let Shadow off the leash to roam, I lost a small battle, but the war wasn't over. Problems to solve. One, how to get a muzzle. Two, where to keep Shadow. Instantly, I had the answer to number one. When Pops dropped me off at Mama's work, I'd take a quick detour to the pet store that was right around the corner. Now for problem two. For the next few minutes, the circuits in my brain worked hard until I finally got it, got it the answer. Old Ms. Moran, the neighborhood animal lover. She always put food out for straight cats and she loves her some shadow. Okay, if I go see how Miss Moran's doing, is she see if she needs some help, I asked Pops. Helping old people is only one of many ways to build a parent's pride. As expected, Pop's eyes, Pop's eyes beamed that, I'm so glad you're my son, look. Sure. Thanks, Pops, I grinned and scurried to Miss Moran's. Hey, Miss Moran's, came to see if you need any help packing in case you have to evacuate. I'll tell you the same dang thing I told my daughter this morning. Ain't, I ain't going nowhere. Me and everything I own is staying right here. Watched them build them levees long after that storm in 47. Hurricane can't scare me, lives through Betsy. After that, they build them levees up 12, up to 12 feet. Only evacuated once for Camely because my mister made me. And even that one turned in Miss New Orleans. Besides, won't be long before they put me in the ground, no way. So you going back home and tell your daddy and ain't very nice for him to send you over here. But I ain't budging. She balled up a fish and shook it at me like she was prepared to fight. She was mad. No one sent me. I came on my own. Her face changed and she gave me the, you are such a, such a nice young man gaze. If I hadn't been doing this for a good cause, I would have felt like a crumb. You hungry, Saint? She asked. Got some crab cakes I couldn't, I could heat up and fruit punch. Mm. I licked my lips. Crab cakes. It was the least I could do. Takes a while for my old oven, oven to heat. No, you have a microwave, I asked. She pointed to an unopened box in the corner of her front room that said, microwave oven. Been sitting there for years. Got no use for, for none of that. Would have given it to Goodwill, but it was a Christmas present for my daughter. While Miss Moran fiddled in the kitchen, I looked around. Though I've been inside her house more than a few times, it felt like I'd never really seen it. I scanned her wall of mostly old black and white photographs and landed on one of a smiling couple on their wedding day. It had to be Mr. and Ms. Moran. She peeked from the kitchen. The one next to that is me and my sis Mimi at one of the Mardi Gras balls. Lord, we used to have some good times during Mardi Gras. Yeah, Mardi Gras is fun, I agreed. It ain't nothing like it was back then. Mardi Gras was something you planned for. All the balls, the dresses, Lord, it was wonderful. Usually I hate it when old people start to talk about the good old days, but today with Miss Moran, I let it slide. I was washing down my third crab cake with punch when I decided to come clean. I didn't really come over here to help you pack. You don't say. I came to ask you for a favor. She didn't seem surprised. That so? Thank you, Ms. Moran. I told her for a half hour later, as I hovered at her front door, problem number two is solved. Soon as I get the muzzle and find Shadow, I'll bring him over. As usual, she ragged her finger. 
Be good as a saint now, you hear? I hear. And you're welcome to stop by any time to visit and have a little bit to eat. Old folks get lonely. I will, I said, then I headed home. And when I glanced back, she was still on her porch looking after me. If Hurricane Katrina did come and we were ordered to evacuate New Orleans, I hope she'd change her mind. As soon as I got home, Pops ordered me to the car. Gonna drop you off with your mama before I head to the restaurant. I needed cash for the muzzle. Can I at least go to the bathroom? Be quick. Because the LeBlanc was almost mine, I really didn't want to spend any money, but I had no choice. I had no clue, some, no clue how much a muzzle cost, so I took five 20s from my safe, snatched my duffel bag, and scrambled. So Ms. Moran's going to evacuate this time, huh? Pops inquired as we drove. Nope, I replied. She said she wasn't going anywhere. And then what were you doing there so long? She made me some crab cakes. Were they good? I rubbed my stomach. You know it. Pops and I joined in laughter. Traffic's starting to get heavy, he noted. Lots of folks are already leaving the city just in case. But the levees will keep most of the water out, won't they? Pops sighed. Hope so. He dropped me off in front of the hospital. Your mom is in the cafeteria waiting on you, he said and sped off. As soon as he turned the corner, I made a beeline to the pet store. And minutes later, when I greeted mama, the muzzle was in my duffel bag and I was grinning. You look happy, she remarked. I am. The rest of the day was spent trailing her from place to place, sitting in on boring meetings where people in charge of the hospital were reviewing the hurricane preparedness plan. Mama called these if meetings. If this happens, then we do this. Or if that happens, we do that. They seemed to have it all together, but some had worried faces. There's nothing to be concerned about. Remember Ivan? Some doctor commented. Heads nodded. Yeah. I agreed. We went into Baton Rouge for nothing. Eyes flew to Mama, who quickly glared at me and pressed the finger to her lips, telling me to shush. Sorry, I said. And that is. Oh, no, I'm going to finish the chapter. There's just a page and a half left. Mama's cell phone rang as soon as we got home. What now? She asked. I figured it was the hospital. Yes, she said, and paused while the other person talked. The patients in the ICU, of course, she answered. Can I go to Mona Lisa's? I mouthed and gestured. Yes, she mouthed back. My belief that the best time to get to try to get away with stuff is when parents have their minds on other things had been confirmed twice today. You gonna evacuate if they tell us to? I asked Mona Lisa as we sh searched for shadow. We're leaving tomorrow for Los Angeles to go to my auntie's wedding. It's supposed to fly Black Monday. But if they evacuate, we'll stay there till whenever. Y'all going back? We all going to Baton Rouge again? Probably if they make us. Shadow, she shouted. Here, boy. Here, boy, I repeated and whistled as loud as I could. Still no shadow. My daddy said he's sick of this hurricane mess. We might move to Houston. He can find a good job there. Texas, I asked. What other kind of Houston you know? But you can't. I'll wait. Why not? B but because I stammer stammered, then mumbled my pop's words, because ain't no place like New Orleans. For real, huh? That was when Shadow, tail wagging, acting like he didn't have a care in the world, found us. Before long, we had him on the leash and at dusk deposited him at Miss Moran's. Her television was blaring with hurricane news. These water people sure like to make a fuss, don't they? The forecasters were now claiming Katrina might be a major hurricane. Sure like to make a fuss, Miss Moran said again. All right, 